Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for that song. Okay. So, very appropriate song for today, huh? And hopefully we can give thanks with a grateful heart. And that we have something to be grateful for. Um, I'm grateful for each of you being here today. And those of you tuning on in online, either live or later. Um, and I hope that everybody had a good Thanksgiving. How many of you were with family? Lots of you, right? Yeah, we had our family together. And I'll tell you the thing I'm most thankful for. And that is all of us did uh, 5K, a few of us ran, three of us, <laughs> and five walked. Four. Four what? <laughs> Four ran? Oh, he's including the dog. <laughs> I'm thinking, where are you coming up with four, son? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, Rocky... Ryan's dog did go the whole way, and he, he was quite a trooper. <clears throat> but Beth was one of the others, and she walked without even stopping once. Uh, 3.2 miles nonstop. And so we're very, very grateful. I thank you for the, all of you who have prayed for her. Um, she's moving in such a good direction, and so we're, we're glad for that. Um, so, why don't we pray, and then we'll get into it. Well, first I have an announcement, sorry. Potluck next Sabbath. And the reason for potluck next Sabbath is because of the annual conference report that was just announced. At 2 o'clock, we want you to come for potluck, hang out, and then we'll watch this together. Maybe we'll have some discussion afterwards, or... You know, we're part of a local family, but our local family is part of a bigger family. All over the state of Pennsylvania, there are how many? 130 churches? 100, approximately 130 other churches meeting this morning. Just like we are all over the state. And we are a team. And so we're going to get to hear the team report Amen. of what God has been doing. And I want you to be here for that. And I'm grateful that we had a volunteer that said, let's do potluck. <laughs> let's all stay for this. So, um, is it just a normal potluck? Just bring... Normal potluck. Bring whatever God puts it on your heart to bring. So hopefully you'll come and join us. But let's pray now. Father in heaven, Lord God, we come to you um, by faith, believing that your spirit's been here, and believing that you will continue um, to, to bless and to, to speak, as you already have been doing through testimony and song and, and thanksgiving. Um, but now, Lord, we want to get into your word, son. And may your word, which is powerful, um, touch our own hearts. And I ask for this in Jesus' name, and thank you for it. Amen. <laughs> okay, so probably everybody here, or most of you, spent at least a fraction of a time, maybe collectively, as we did in our house, sharing some of the things that we are thankful for. And that's so traditional for one of our 365 days in a year for us to do this, it's something that would be great 365 days a year, right? The other 364, that, that song that, uh, that give thanks with a grateful heart, that that could spring out of us every single day. That would be wonderful, and I know that God would love to hear our gratitude for what he has done. And so it makes me think of, of a few stories in the Bible of thankfulness. Um, the ten lepers, remember God, Jesus healed ten Sadly, one came back to thank him, and uh, the others, I'm sure they were grateful, but they didn't express their gratitude, and so we want to be like that one leper, not the other nine. Amen. I think of a crippled man healed by Peter and John, and how grateful for he was. Um, the Bible says he was leaping, jumping and leaping and praising God, I wish I could see it. Maybe in heaven I can ask him to duplicate exactly move by move what he did, and word by word. I think that would be so fun. But here's a man extremely grateful for what God did in his life. And I think of the Passover and how that was celebrated year by year, how God delivered the Israelites from bondage to freedom. 
And none of us have been in bondage like this, but can you imagine the anniversary of your freedom from bondage? You would want to celebrate that, I think. And so that was an annual thanksgiving to God for what He had done in their lives. And thanksgiving after something good has happened is great. It really is great. Um, and, but I'm going to talk more today, more today about giving thanks before God has done something. Thanks after we've prayed, thanking God for answering. That will be our focus. But I want us to, to look at a verse in Philippians 4, 6, and some verses before this were just read. In verse 6 it says, do not be anxious about how much? Anything. Okay, so God says, hey, half of what you're anxious for is okay, the other half is not. Is that what he's saying? Don't be anxious about any, anything. Anything. That almost seems impossible, doesn't it? <laughs> but that's what God is, is inviting us to experience. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And so here we have a tonic for anxiety. And we'll talk about that a little bit as we go. Talking about anxiety, statistics I read said that 40 million people each year in our own country struggle with anxiety. And that's 18% of the population. So if we have 75 people here, which is pretty much average, that means 13.5 of you are dealing with some anxiety. You don't have to identify, self-identify, especially the 0.5. We don't want that person to identify Okay, But the fact is, this is something that affects each one of us, or, or people that we love and care for. Um, it's a real problem. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, it says, Anxiety is a feeling of unease, worry, or nervousness. This feeling is related to uncertainty or imminent future events. Under this definition, we all feel anxious from time to time. That's true, isn't it? <clears throat> all of us have those those times where it kind of peaks. <clears throat> but many people, it's just there chronically all the time at a low level at, at a minimum. And according to the American Psychological Association, anxiety is characterized by worried and intrusive thoughts and tension, but also triggers physical changes, including sweating, a rapid heartbeat, dizziness, and an increase in blood pressure. So anxiety has an effect on us physically, doesn't it? Um, twelve types of stress-induced sickness. Okay? So twelve things that actually generate physical sickness from stress. Stress-induced ischemia to the heart. High blood pressure. Stress-induced hyperglycemia, elevated blood sugar. Stress-induced broken heart syndrome can actually cause heart attacks. Rarely, but it can. Stress-induced insomnia. I've experienced that. I wish I had it. Stress-induced anxiety. Chronic anxiety. Stress-induced depression. Stress-induced pain. Stress-induced inflammation. Maybe some of our inflammation and pain is, is more stress-involved. Stress-induced nausea and diarrhea. Stress-induced infections. Irreg irregular or painful periods. All of these things can have a connection. Scientifically, they found a connection between those stressors and our physical health. Amen. And so, yeah, a, a cure or a tonic, or something that can relieve us from anxiety is something a lot of us need, wouldn't you say? Amen. Or people that we care about need. Seven ways to reduce anxiety, according to um, goodrx.com or something. Goodrx is where I went. Practice deep breathing. Nice deep breath will practice. In through your nose, out through your mouth. You ready? One, two, three. One more. Wow. So relaxed. 
Seriously, that is something that can help. When you're feeling that build up inside, just pause and take some time for some deep breathing. Exercise every day can have a big impact on the anxiety we feel. Getting outside and spending some time in nature if you have access to it. Today, hey, you don't have work or other things. It's a beautiful day. Go outside and enjoy some time in nature. Spend time with animals, either your own or in a volunteer setting. Eat healthy and nourishing diet and avoid processed foods and alcohol. Try to improve the amount and quality of your sleep. And if you, there's a thing called sleep hygiene. If you're struggling with your sleep and haven't tried that yet, look up sleep hygiene. It will give you some things, small things that add up to you getting a better night's sleep. Build and nurture a network of friends and family. And that can include, can include a church family. It is important for us to help reduce our anxiety as we come together and experience acceptance, experience love, experience the camaraderie of, of doing worship and mission work together. These are some things. Um, but, and, and I share these because they're real and they really can help. And so what I'm going to get from the Bible is in addition to these, not in place of these, but in addition, and I think a very, very important addition. So again to our verse, Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything but in everything with three things, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. So prayer, looking up into the Greek, I find that prayer in, in other, other verses that include the same Greek word, prayer represents, is, is our, our request going to God. We present our request to God. That's prayer. But what about supplication? That kind of sounds the same. Supplication, we present the request for others. And when you see that word in the Greek for supplication, you look up all the verses, it's consistently the same. It's praying on behalf of someone else. And so God wants us not to just pray for our own needs. He wants us to pray for each other's needs. Um, that's important. So, but I put this in, uh, I wanted you to remember, PTSD. Can you remember that? By the end, hopefully you remember what each letter stands for. So P for prayer, it's not in the order I know in Philippians 4, 6, but I want you to remember it, so this will work. Thanksgiving for what God has done and will do. Supplication we've talked about, and delight or rejoice. That's just in two verses later. Rejoice in the Lord how often? Always, it says, rejoice or delight is a synonym for rejoice. So we, the, for dealing with our anxiety, we pray. We let God know our request. We're thankful for what he's done. We're thankful for what he's going to do with this request we just present, we presented. Supplication, we pray for other people in need, that our thoughts aren't just on ourselves, And we delight in the Lord always. So, three ingredients of God's anxiety prescription that's in verse 6. Taking our request to God, supplication, requesting God's help for others, and thanksgiving, giving thanks. So with thanksgiving, as I mentioned, we can thank God for what he's done in the past, and I'll tell you, and I bet you've experienced this too, when you're praying for something, and you spend some time to just thank God for how he's answered other prayers before, what does that do for you? That gives you a greater confidence, doesn't it? That gives you a greater um, faith that God is going to come through for you again. And so as we pray, thanksgiving is really important for what he's done before. But also, we can thank God for answering our current request. Answering before it happens, that's faith, isn't it? Answering after it's happened is gratitude. We can be grateful, can't we, for what God has done, but faith thanks God in advance. So God's prescription, I've already covered it, but that's just a prettier way to say it, okay? Um, and I think of someone, George Mueller, and you've heard this story, I shared it in a, a prayer sermon just uh, maybe a month ago. And you might remember that story where in his orphanage, he's got all the kids around the breakfast table. The plates are there, the utensils are there, the children are there. There's only one thing missing. What is that? 
<laughs> the food is not there. And what does George Mueller do? He prays and he thanks God for providing a meal he can't even see. That's faith, isn't it? Amen. That's throwing thankfulness into prayer. Amen. And then the knock comes on the door, and the baker was impressed at like 3 in the morning to bake bread, and then brought the bread there. Do you need bread? Yeah, we need bread. And the milkman, he comes by, and I think it was his, his carriage broke down. He didn't want the milk to waste. Can you use milk? And within minutes of him saying, thank you, God, for providing our meal we can't even see, Already before he prayed, the answer was on the way. He was thanking God. He believed so strongly God's not going to leave those children hungry. And that he could ask and that God would provide. Amen. We have a God that, that will provide, that we can thank and in advance for what he does. And you know what? I think that we should mix in thanksgiving um, our thankfulness in our prayers in a lot of ways. When we take our medicine, lots of times you're supposed to take it with water, right? Sometimes you're supposed to take it with food. So how about our prayer and supplication taking it with thanksgiving? And, and having that with every dose. I'll tell you, I know someone recently who tried to take their pills without water and it got stuck and was painful for hours painful very painful for hours before finally it dissolved and went down it got stuck could it be that maybe our prayers our life is that we have more pain because we're having not having our supplication and prayer with thanksgiving to, to, uh, to be added um, to our prayers. You know, when you go on a family vacation, it works best if you have mom and dad and the children, right? Amen. It's hard to have a family vacation if you leave them behind. And it's hard to have a great prayer life if all we have is supplication and request and not the thanksgiving. So I don't know about you, if that hasn't been a big part of your prayer life, right here we're seeing that it is important for us. Very important for us. And so maybe you have a list. Maybe there's some of you that journal God's answers to prayer for the past. If you haven't, that is a great idea. And when you have a pressing need for the future, go back and read that. So that you can remember, be refreshed, what God has done before. And okay, I can thank God for already taking care of this situation that I have brought to him. How many of you as parents want your kids to come to request to you that they don't even believe you're going to do for them? I mean, how many of us want our kids to do that if it's in their best interest to have them come to us and they don't even think we care enough or have the power or whatever to, to take care of it? And we have a Father in Heaven who's much better and much more loving than we are, right? And so, of course, He would want us to ask, believing and thanking Him for taking care of whatever it is that need we have. I'm inspired by this story, I've preached on it, of Jehoshaphat. And you might remember, they had an army coming at them that was so huge, they had zero, zero chance. No matter what strategy they had, they could have spent a week with their smartest military people coming up with a strategy. They never would have come up with one that would work. So what did they do? <laughs> they prayed. God. And they were so confident that God would answer their prayer that they put the choir first. Is that someone that is, is confident and thankful for what God's about to do or what? They were, they presented and they were thanking God, even singing their thanksgiving to God on the way to victory that they hadn't even experienced yet. Wow, wouldn't it be fun to be a church like that? <laughs> when there's a problem, we get together and we pray and we are so confident that God is going to answer our prayer that we act on it before it even happens. And Beth and I, we moved from Cedar Rapids to Des Moines. Cedar, I was fairly expensive housing, 
um, maybe not quite as much as this area, but it's, for the Midwest, it's high. And uh, Cedar Rapids was the second highest where we came from, but Des Moines was the most expensive by far. And we didn't know if we were going to find a decent house there. And especially for the money that we had just sold our house for, and, and we were concerned for quite a while. And we were praying each night when we had our prayer together. Beth and I would pray for a house. And then we remembered, man, God's always given us a good house, hasn't he? Well, I guess he's going to give us a new one again. Hmm. If we know he's going to give us a good one again that we're asking for, why don't we just start thanking him now? And we got the best house we've ever had. We wish we could have transported it here. We've said it many times. <laughs> we've got a nice house here. I'm grateful for our house. It's getting fixed up. It's getting really nice. But this was, that picture was our house in Des Moines. Four bedrooms, three and a half bathrooms, over half an acre in town. It was just, it, it was the best. And we, we thank God in advance. He gave us that faith. And then that came from remembering every time God's answered our prayer. He'll answer again. We know that he will. So again, God's prescription. P for prayer. Present our request. T, thanksgiving for what God has done and will do. S, supplication. Our request for others in delight. Delight in the Lord always. Not just when we see how he can answer our problems. Even when we can't see his answer or solution to our problem. And Jesus himself said, And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have what? If we have faith. So faith, won't faith lead us to thank God for answering our prayer? That's, right. That's what faith will do. Thanking him in advance. 1 John 5 verses 14 to 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of Him. So is the Bible indicating that it is okay, even appropriate, for us to have confidence that we will receive an answer to our prayer? Isn't that what it's saying? If we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. It does say before that, if we ask anything according to his will, and there's some things that we know wouldn't be according to his will, and there's some things we know would be, because like receiving the Holy Spirit, he specifically says, ask for this one. When Jesus specifically says, pray for labors because there's a big harvest, do we have to wonder if he'll answer that one? It's his will. He told us it's his will. We can thank him in advance for providing those two things. But there are so many things that we can know are his will in our lives that we can thank him and expect it from him. In Mark eleven twenty four, 24, Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So, is this about name it and claim it? Is that what we see? No, it's according to his will. But do you think there could be a lot more things according to his will that we're not thanking him for in advance? Yeah, that's right. I think that there are. Absolutely. And so, PTSD, prayer, thanksgiving, supplication, delight. Abigail Conway says this. I looked up some good quotes, and this was one I liked. Faith is bringing my request before God with the complete confidence that I will be thanking Him for His answer no matter what it might be. What do you think of that? Thanking Him for His answer no matter what it might be. Because that's thanksgiving, but that's also submission, isn't it? We're thanking God for whatever He decides to do as far as answer, but we know He's going to answer, and so we don't need to wait to thank him. Um, Ellen White, one of my favorite authors, in one of my favorite books, Desire of Ages, says this, Amen. not because we see or feel that God hears us are we to believe. So is there feeling involved or not? It says we don't need to wait to feel it. We are to trust his promises. When we come to him in faith, every petition enters the heart of God. Isn't that beautiful? 
every petition, everything from your heart goes to God's heart. When we have asked for his blessing, we should believe that we receive it and thank him that we have received it. Then we are to go about our duties, assured that the blessings will be realized when we need it most. It might be last minute, but it will be when we need it most. When we have learned to do this, we shall know that our prayers are answered. Know to do this, she's talking about having confidence and believing that it will be, our request will be received, the things that we've asked of him. A famous American pastor, Rick Warren, says this, If I wait to thank God until after he answers my prayer, that's gratitude. But if I thank God in advance before he answers my prayer, that's faith. We always want to thank God when he answers our prayers, but we show faith in God if we also do it beforehand. So that's reiterating what I was saying. I guess I'm pretty smart too. So, George Mueller said, I believe God has heard my prayers. He will make it manifest in his own good time that he has heard me. I've recorded my petitions that when God has answered them, His name shall be glorified. He kept a record of his petitions because he wanted to remember and recognize God's answer. That he could bring honor and glory to God. God, you did this. I called to you and you provided. Thank you. God, to God be the glory. So PTSD, prayer, thanksgiving, supplication, and delight. And then I have my own quote. (laughs) I didn't put it on here. But this is what I've come to realize going through some challenges myself. And that is God doesn't waste a trial. And I keep reminding myself of that. In the midst of the trial, I can thank God he's not going to waste this. He's going to bring something good out of it. If that is growing my faith or Beth's faith or my family's faith or someone else's faith if it's going to help me to be able to relate to people better than I could before and minister more effectively than I could before, I don't know what it is, but I am convinced that God doesn't waste a trial. Absolutely. And that's something that helps me be thankful before I've seen an answer. God, you're not going to waste this. I don't want it, but I'm thankful you're not going to waste this. Something good will happen from it. So, will we be people who use this anxiety reduction prescription found in Matthew 4, verse 6? We don't want all those health problems, do we? We don't want to go through life all on edge, do we? God has given us something that we can take home and use today. We can present our request to God. We can can have supplication for others. And we can do that with thanksgiving, even before we've ever seen an answer. And I'll tell you, friends, that will help us to relax in those stressful times. So do you want to use the prescription? I gave it to you for free because God gave it for free, didn't he? He's given us, he says, don't be anxious for anything. This is how you can handle it. Let's pray together. Father in heaven. You are good. Often we recognize it after. But Lord, help us to be so confident in you, believing that what we've asked, according to your will, that we will have it. And that you will take care of our needs as we present our request to you. Um, Lord, give us faith to thank you in advance. And that that will be part of our prayer experience here at Kenhurst. Lord, we want to be a praying church. You've said that your, your house is to be a house of prayer. And so, Lord, as we move more and more in that direction, may we include thanksgiving in our house of prayer experience. I pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And our closing song is, I forgot the number, 557. And I'll help lead out today. Come, 
thankful people come. your children that have come to you by faith. Oh God, we are thankful that we can be part of that harvest. Help us, Father, to be anxious free as we wait for you to take us home. In Jesus' name, amen. 